What's up guys, welcome back. So this is a really important video. It's about ankle, knee, hip pain and injuries, why we're getting them, how to prevent them and what we're looking out for. So let's get into it. So first things first, this video is going to be about 10 minutes and it's going to be a lot of info. A lot of info. It's basically anecdotally and research wise and from other professionals what I've learned in two years of suffering with patellar tendonitis. So get a pen and pad because there's going to be some bits of gold in here which are going to help you out no end. So the first thing we're going to talk about and the most important is if you are feeling pain in a joint or anywhere in your body, something is wrong. It needs to be fixed. So whether you can assess it yourself, which we'll talk about in a minute, or you need to see a professional, make sure you do that. If you keep training and you keep causing pain, you will cause more damage until you get to a point where it's not rectifiable anymore without surgery. So I can't stress enough, don't mess about with it. Listen to this video. If you're unsure of what your problems still are, go and see someone. So a lot of you may know that I've suffered from patellar tendonitis for about two years now. That is inflammation of the patellar tendon. Quite crudely and basically, the patellar tendon is what joins your femur, your thigh bone, to your tibia, your shin bone. So it works in extension and flexion at the knee, especially in extension. Basically what happens, because of misalignment, tight muscles, injuries, whatever it may be, that tendon gets inflamed. And basically, when it gets inflamed, it basically, it, the fibers start to kind of tear and fray and break away. So your body, in a repairing process, lays down collagen fibers to try and repair that. Problem is, if you're still causing problems, you're still hurting your knee, those fibers will get frayed and it will get messy and it will prolong your injury. So let's start at the real basics. If you're getting ankle, knee or hip problems, where you're feeling the problem does not necessarily mean that's where the problem is. So let me explain this. You can get problems in your knees caused by your ankles. You can get problems in your knees caused by your hips and vice versa all around. You can even get tension headaches from, from your feet. So it can travel up and down the body. So the most common one that I see is people's knees caving in, okay, internal rotation. This is what I had and this is what has caused my patellar tendonitis. So when I was squatting, I was coming up from my squat and my knees were starting to kick in. This happens for a lot of people. So I assumed it was weak glute medes. Glute medes are part of your glute muscles, your butt muscles, and its job is to externally rotate the knees, okay, out to the side. So I assumed that was weak. Saw a specialist, he's like, right, this is what we're gonna do. I did the rehab exercises, still squatting, didn't solve the problem, still feeling pain, stopped squatting, which was the best move that I've done. So then I basically saw a lot of other people and I finally got round to a podiatrist or a chiropodist. Wow, I can't believe I got that, those words out in one take. Um, and that is basically someone who looks at your feet. So I have inherited two disadvantages from my parents. From my mum and my mum's mum, I've, in, I've inherited ankles that roll in, okay? So if my feet are flat on the floor and my ankles roll in, what does that do to my knees? They go in, but because they're further away from the motion, or from what the problem is, they cave in further. So drop down arches, ankles kicking in, knees kicking in, assume it's my hips, it's actually my ankles. And from my dad, I inherited supination. So basically, I walk very heavily on the outside of my feet. So what happens? Outside of the feet, hit the floor, shock absorbent is bad because of that position. My ankles from my feet then roll in, ankles roll in last, which sends my knees in as well. So my problem wasn't actually weak glutes, although strong glutes will help the issue. My problem was biomechanically at my ankles. Another problem you might find biomechanically is if you have very long femurs. If you have long thigh bones, squatting is uglier and harder for you. That's quite, quite the honest truth. So basically, because your thighs are very long, your butt has to go further back to stop your knees going miles forwards. This ultimately sends your chest further forwards as well. So again, it's, it's not as easy for you. If you, we are all set up differently biomechanically. So it makes some things easier for us and some things easier for others. Typically, body weight moves, chin ups, pull ups are gonna be harder for people with longer limbs along with squats. So let's talk about the muscular reasons that people get issues with their joints. One is inflexibility and mobility and tight muscles, very, very common and the easiest to fix. We will look at some stretches in a moment for that, but let's talk about the big muscular problem and that is weak underactive glutes. So your glute muscles are the collection of butt muscles that you have. They are the main hinge in your body. They work with extension at the hips, so think about coming up from a squat or a deadlift, your hips extend at the top and they work with external rotation in the knee as well, or at the hip, sorry. So when they're weak, because we sit down a lot, we sit down a lot, they become very underactive, our hip flexors on the front of our thighs become very active. 
So what we need to do is we need to get them working and get them kind of functioning properly. To do this, you can use simple things like glute bridges with no weight. You can work onto glute hip thrust, lunges, step ups, single leg box squats, all these things. Um, even actually, I would start with having a resistance band around your knees and holding squats or squatting and pushing your knees out, stepping from side to side, just to get those muscles working and getting your body to understand what it is to make those muscles work. That mind and muscle connection is super, super important. I would also use a slow-mo camera, use your iPhone, stick it on slow-mo, film or get someone to film your technique when squatting, walking up and down stairs and that will give you so much insight into what your body is doing. So with fixing injuries from a muscular point of view, you need to be methodical and clever about it. There's no point in me going back to squatting if I have bad technique because I'm not going to fix the problem, I'm going to cause more aggravation to the knee if it's the patella tendon. So what I need to do is I need to break it down, repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat exercises with good movement until I perfect it and it becomes a consolidated movement pattern. So my body automatically uses that movement pattern when I go to squat. So our body uses movement patterns. So if you throw a baseball, yeah, your body knows how to throw that. And if you want to get better at it, you have to learn a new movement. Sometimes we hijack other movements to get to other movements, so when you're first learning to squat, you might hijack a jump, for example. You might kind of use that kind of movement pattern, if that makes sense. But you need to be methodical about it. You need to start very light, fix the root cause of the problems. Muscles that aren't firing, get a resistance band around the knees, okay? Use clams, walking lunges, all these kind of things, and just step up, step up, and step up. I would start simple, isometric holes. Squats against the wall will put a nice amount of tension through the patella tendon and allow you to start to build some strength up against it. What you need to do though is make sure you're not feeling pain, okay? You're going far enough to repair because weak muscles that are causing the problem aren't going to repair, aren't going to repair themselves just by resting the injury. You need to still strengthen those muscles but not aggravate the injury. Then you can move into things with eccentric motion, so lowering phases that are very slow, very slow eccentric squats, very slow step ups, you know what I mean? All these kind of things. And then you can slowly step it up and step it up until you start bringing in more weight and eventually, fingers crossed, get back to squatting. With tight muscles, this is the most common and the easiest to solve, hence why I left it to the end. Normally, you're gonna have tight hips, Sometimes the glutes, especially hip flexors and quads. So you want to foam roll and stretch. I'll flash up some stretches that you can use now. Um, one thing I will say is we did a video on foam rolling and then we did a blog post on it afterwards, um, which kind of contradict each other in terms of it might not be ideal to foam roll your IT bands. So check out that blog. I'll put a link in the description box before you go and do that. It might be more advisable to spend more time foam roll in the vastus lateris, which is the outside of the quad, just on kind of the corner of the meat, you know, if you know what I mean. So it's not right on the side IT band, it's on the corner of the thigh. So what we've said so far is assess the problem. Find the root cause, use a specialist if you need to. Do not keep training on an injury. Then find out, is it muscular? Is it biomechanical? Is it, is it tight muscles? And where do I go from there, okay? Don't aggravate it. Release it off, stretch it off, you should be stretching anyway, and then really try and get that muscle to mind connection working if there are weak muscles. Um, if you think it might be your feet, go and see a foot specialist, um, but just don't leave it. So I hope this has helped you all. Um, there's probably more that I've missed, there almost certainly is. That will be over on the blog post uh, about the and the nitis and knee problems. I'll put a link to that below as well. Um, I hope this helps you all and I'll speak to you very soon. Cheers guys.